these are some things that you may want to check out and, and turn on. Now, I wanted to just show you uh, today the advanced settings that we have here in GarageBand. And just so that you know everywhere you can go to get your GarageBand set up and optimized as best you can. So we're here in a GarageBand project. The first place that we want to look at is up here in the top right. We're going to click or tap on your little settings icon. If you're on an iPhone, it may be under a little drop down, but you'll be looking for this settings. And then we're going to go down here. Now, these are all your regular settings. You'd be aware of these. You've got tempo, time signature, key signature, your fade out option you can do there, your notepad you can jump into, jam session, which I've never used. Anyone ever used jam session? It's honestly, it's the one function I've never made a video on or never even used. I've just never found a need for it. And this is the one I want to draw your attention to, the advanced settings. So if we tap advanced, these are some things that you may want to check out and, and turn on. Multi-track recording. Now, this is where it will enable multi-track recording even when the audio device uh, with multi-track input, even when no multi-track audio device is, is detected. So if you're plugging in an interface and you're having issues, you, you don't really ever need this on, but uh, you can see there that it gives you it gives you that option there. So it says, yep, if you, if, you, if you don't have that, if you don't have the ability to record multiple tracks at once, come in here, turn it on. It should auto do that, but if it doesn't, come and do that. 24-bit audio resolution. If you listen to nothing else, listen to this bit, and I'll tell you it twice because it's so important. Enable 24-bit resolution. There is no reason to not, and if you leave it that way, it'll be 16-bit audio. So it's no big deal. 16-bit audio is still okay, but it is one third less of the resolution of 24-bit. And if you have more for free, you might as well use it, right? Uh, the reason that you want this is that if you're plugging in something like a Steinberg or a Focusrite or a Behringer interface that is 24-bit, you want to be able to record in that full 24-bit resolution. Otherwise, it will downscale your audio and you'll instantly be getting lower quality audio than you deserve if you're using a microphone or a guitar to record. The other thing is, even if you're an electronic, producer and you're just using loops, a lot of the loops in GarageBand are now 24-bit. So if you don't have that selected, they'll also be downscaled to 16-bit. And if you want to learn all about bit rates and sampling rates, uh, there's a few videos here on the channel. Just search my name. If you search Pete John's bit rate or Pete John's uh, audio sampling, you'll probably find a bunch of my videos there. Uh, run in the background. This just lets GarageBand run and uh, have audio even when you've got other background apps. So if we come in here and we play, I've just turned that down a little bit. With running background on, we can actually jump around here and go into a different app and start doing things and it'll still keep playing. See how we've got the little red thing in the top corner there? We tap that, it brings us back. So uh, yeah, so that's that's super handy. Now there is a bug at the moment. Sometimes on some iPhones and iPads, it will still not work. Uh, I, I can't explain it. I haven't even worked out which models that's on. It, it seems to be a bit random, but if you if it's not working for you, there is a bug at the moment that is causing some folks some issues. Use with music apps. Um, so you can switch this on to, it says here, to optimize GarageBand performance for use with other music apps. You may notice a delay when playing some touch instruments. So again, so turn that on. If you're finding issues, turn it off. It's a weird one that there's no documentation around exactly what it does, apart from make it better. But if it doesn't make it better, turn it off. If you're finding issues, try turning it on. Uh, Bluetooth MIDI devices, you can come in here and you can add. I've only got my phone there, but if you're using a Bluetooth MIDI keyboard, you can do that. And if you're using GarageBand and other music apps, you can send the MIDI clock. And that's important for syncing up your apps with other apps. So make sure that uh, the MIDI clock is the same and all of your instruments and MIDI information gets synced up. Not super important because GarageBand can't actually... It doesn't actually export MIDI, but yeah, if, you, if you're using it and integrating it with other apps, turn that on. Uh, and again, if you don't need it, you won't need it. But there, there's the few options. And again, I said I mentioned it twice, 24-bit audio resolution, just turn it on. Just do it right now. If you don't have it on, go in, turn it on. And there is another place where you can go to options, which I talk about in other videos, over on the actual settings. So go to the, the main settings. In fact, let's just show it real quick, because for, for completeness... Uh, if you are playing around with this, then uh, we'll need to do this. So we'll jump back over here. Uh, so what we want to do is go to this little icon here, our settings. But here you go. If you scroll on the left-hand side here, scroll on down until you get to the word GarageBand. There it is. 
this is where we have some additional settings. So you can come and play in here. You've got Bluetooth there, all of the sort of random ones. Your document storage. In fact, I don't know why this is on my iPad at the moment. You should. I should uh, make sure that I store documents on iCloud Drive, hey? That's a bit weird. Um, I obviously haven't set this up since I got this. Your knob gestures, you've got crosstalk protection for your guitars. I won't go into details on this. Automatic recording length, support for MPE controllers. Uh, you've got uh, keyboard note labels in here, those iOS plugins. So there's free plugins you get with iOS and the all-important reset garage band. So if your garage band's crashing, I did a video on this during the week, you can tap on that one and then restart your garage band and it should actually fix some of those crashing related errors. So there you go. There is the other other place you can go because you know what <laughs> you wouldn't want to make it simple and put all your options in one place uh, let's put them in two separate places